Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Isaiah chapter 53, the suffering servant. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is one chapter you will never hear read in the synagogue. Matter of fact, they try to explain it away, claiming that they themselves are the suffering servant. But when you read the chapter and delve into its deeper meaning, you see that that is absolutely impossible. And Someone once mentioned to me words that you'll never hear at a Jewish funeral. Well, at least he's in a better place. Before we start reading, I'd like to point out that Isaiah 53 corresponds roughly to the 53rd book of the King James Bible, which is Second Thessalonians. Isaiah covers the first coming when Christ came born of a woman in the flesh, whereas Second Thessalonians covers the coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah when he comes in his resurrected body. Big difference between the first and the last coming, second or last coming. So, let's take a look. You know, everybody, uh, I don't even feel worthy to do a commentary on this because, well, what can I tell you? Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who hath re believed our report? Good question. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and read the entire chapter through, and then I'm going to read, go back and read certain parts, and then I'm going to show the parallel in the New Testament. So that's what I'm going to do. Verse 2, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So evidently, Christ was in the flesh was not a handsome guy, I guess, that all the women would swoon over. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As we hid, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity, or sin, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. 
yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his, uh, before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my Righteous servant, justify many, justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressor, transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 53, verse 1. So, who hath believed our report? Well, they're called Christians, right? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Ah, good question. Well, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7, you know, uh, Isaiah 53 verse 1 said, And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Well, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Obey not the gospel? Huh. So we got to obey the gospel? Hmm. That sounds like a Bible study coming on. All right. How about verse 9? Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of, his, of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Isaiah 53 and verse 3. We're going to skip verse 2. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. In John fifteen eighteen, Jesus said, If the world hate you, 
ye know that it hated me before it hated you. John 15, 25, But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. In 1 Corinthians 1, 28, we read, And base things of the world, and things which are despised, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. So is Christ a man of sorrows? Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. Jesus is in the garden getting ready to be taken to be crucified. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And Jesus, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his pray face and prayed, saying, O Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. I find an interesting companion verse in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 4. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he have prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. But he shall say, I am no prophet, I am an husbandman, for man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And one shall say unto him, what are these wounds in thine hands? Remember, uh, they pierced his hands, right? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered." And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Remember in John 10:11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. At the last, at the last supper in Matthew chapter 26, verse 29, Jesus said, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung an hymn, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. All right, so in Isaiah 53 and verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, remember that, chastisement. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So in Luke 23 and verse 20, uh, Pilate, therefore willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified, and the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. All right, Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is done. So he openeth not his mouth. New Testament witness, Matthew 27, verse 11. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered, nothing. Matthew 26, 
verse 60, but found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, yet they found none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. And the chief priests arose and said unto him, answerest thou nothing? Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. Luke 23, verse 1. All right, this is the trial, well, with Pilate. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Uh, saying that he himself is Christ and king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. In other words, if you say so. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. A Galilean. When, so, and uh, verse 7, And as soon as he heard that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. Verse 8, And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Oh boy, Herod wanted to see a magic show. Then he questioned with him in many words. Herod, you know, questioned Jesus, but he answered him, Nothing. Nothing. All right, Isaiah 53, verse 9, And he made his grave with the wicked. Remember, he was crucified between the two thieves, remember? And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his hand. Let's go to uh, John 19 and verse 38. This is the after the crucifixion. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. All right, so Jesus is dead. And Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. They in took they the body of Jesus and wound it with linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the garden, in the gar oh, I'm sorry, in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden, a new sepulcher wherein was never man yet laid. There, uh, there laid they Jesus because of the Jews preparation day for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Uh, you don't get buried in a, garden with a new sepulcher unless you know the wealthy right so let's see uh and verse 9 of isaiah 53 and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death so you know the rich people have a garden for their burial right because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. 